on us because God loves us. When God shows his benevolence, love, and mercy towards us, we are able to be in this place having the eternal life in our, in our lives. God is willing to forgive us. God is willing to bless us abundantly in spite of the fact that we don't deserve to be treated so that we are dealt with so generously. God is a God of mercy. God is a God who treats us and dealt with us so nicely that we don't even give him thanks. But God being the God he is, he sat with the sinners. He sat with the people who committed adultery, with the people who did not deserve God's grace. But it did not matter because God was not with the most smartest people. God was with the sinners. And that shows God has mercy on all of us. And for that reason, we should show grace to our God because God's grace is something that we cannot compare to. We were once our enemies of Christ. We did not deserve salvation or grace. But let me tell you guys something. Because God is a God of love. He died in the cross for your sins. And he gave us grace. Grace to the undeserving people. David acknowledged that he was not only a sinner by practice. But also by nature. We were all guilty of breaking God's holy law. That we have to understand that we are all sinners. Not only by practice, but by nature. For that reason, we need to ask God for forgiveness every day. Because we were all born sinners. For we did not know Christ at one point in our life. At one point, we knew what right and wrong was. And for that reason, we need to know when to. God has given us our, the grace to us. Amen. We are all guilty of breaking God's holy law. Because we did not deserve to be here. Amen. Because let me tell you guys something. God has shown grace on us. God has shown so many great things for us in our lives. One way or another. But if we don't understand that our God is a God of love and mercy and grace. Then we will not understand Christ. Amen. Man can give grace to one another. But the Bible says there is only one who can give grace to you. Who has the generosity to give favor to the undeserving people. And his name is the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who died in the sins. Who died for your sins on the cross. Amen. Amen. And it says here in Isaiah 48. Chapter 40 verse 8. The grass withers. The flowers fade. But the word of God will stand forever. The world is passing by. Many things we live, our skin, our clothing will pass by. But the one thing that will say is the word of God. For more than 2,000 years, the word of God has stayed the truth. For more than 2,000 years, I know the word of God has been completing itself. And the word of God will live forever, not only in my heart, but in each and one of your hearts. If you understand, God is a God of grace. And for more than, more than 2,000 years, God has shown grace towards humanity in this moment but why haven't we given grace to God why haven't we shown thankfulness to God because God showed um, grace towards the unworthy people towards the sinners people say God does not love me God how can you be a forgiving God if I have sinned but let me say something God was sitting with the sinners God was sitting with our cultures but it did not matter and he still let them be saved he ate with them but our God is such an amazing God he loves each and one of us he gives grace to us because he is a God of love and mercy but where is our grace towards him and Luke 23 34 Jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing because once in our life we did not know what we were doing we were once people that were blind we did not know God but God said here I am son and I know that you have left me I know that you have been a sinner but let me tell you something now I am a God who forgives I am a God who forgives each and one of these sinners in this moment for they do not know what they are doing God is a God of forgiveness God is a God of mercy God is a God of love But what happens when we don't give thanks to God? 
Because God is amazing for what he has done for us is great. Amen. For we do not know God enough. We do not know God enough to understand him. Because our own knowledge cannot compare to God's. Our own understanding cannot compare to God. Because God is a God, an almighty, an, an almighty God who lives eternally. Amen. It's amazing how God sat with the undeserving people. Amen. How God saved one, each and one of us in this moment. I grew up in church. I did not remember exactly when my parents converted. But I am thankful because once my parents did not know who God was. But look, look what the verse we just read. Father, free kid, for they do not know what they are doing. Because we are human beings that don't know what we're doing. We're always corrupt. We're always doing bad things in this earth. There's always so much going on. We do not know the amount of things that go on in this earth. Not even ourselves. We do not understand the type of sins we do. Because we do it from our natural body. Amen. But God still forgives us for that. Here we go, grace to the undeserving. Ephesians 2, 5 says, Made us alive with Christ, even when we are dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. We don't make ourselves alive, God does. Even after sin, God still promised security, joy, blessings. Even after we have sin, God still gives us blessings. That's only when we ask for God. God, I give you thanks. I know that you have blessed my family. Can I say something in this moment? No matter if you're rich or poor, no matter if you're living in a financially stable house, but let me tell you something. No matter where God has placed you, you have to give thanks to him because no matter where God will take you, if it's somewhere far or somewhere near, you still have to give thanks to God because he is a God who makes you alive and not dead. He has brought you out of death and into life. Amen. God brought us out of death. We were all destined to die in hell. But God saved us. God had grace upon humanity. Even though we have sinned as human beings, God said, I have given you the promise of everlasting life. But where has we shown it to him? Where have we shown it? We have all sinned and fall short of glory of the glory of God. Because we need to understand that no matter the family we have, I still give thanks to my parents. I still give thanks to the father I have, to the mother I have, to the two amazing sisters I have. Amen. I give thanks to the pastor I have. Even though I'm not in the biggest church, in a mega church, I still give thanks to God that I am in this place and saved by grace. I am here. Look, I'm not the best drummer, but I still give thanks to my God for giving me the ability to play the drums in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm so thankful to have a family in this place. That this is my family, the churches. People may say, my family's out there. I worship the world. But what is the world full of sin? Amen. God has shown us all grace. He has shown us all grace even though we have fallen short of his glory. And then Romans 5.8 it says, But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were all sinners, Christ, Jesus, Christ died for us. If we were all sinners one day, we will still be sinners to this day. But we are always all sinners. You will never see in the Bible someone who was perfect except God when he came to this earth to show us how we were all to live. Amen. We were all destined to sin. We are not perfect. But once we get closer to God, once we go to that relationship closer to God, and once we know God, he will remove those sins and he will forgive us all. Because he has shown the love towards us while we were all still sinning. He died for you 
who and humanity will die for your sins. There has not been a single family member, a single person in this earth who has died for your sins except Christ Jesus. Amen. And it says here in Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If we believe in our heart, because we did all not once deserve God's mercy, but because God died on the cross, we are all here in this moment. We have the church in this moment, but we are still unworthy, amen. We are here praising God, jumping, saying that we give grace to God. But what happens once we go out of church? Where is that grace shown? We tell people, oh, I don't like my family. I don't like my parents. But at least we have parents who love us. At least we have parents in our house. A father and mother, but there's people out there who are orphans, who are people who don't have a father or mother. But I'm still thankful that God has given me a family to live. Right. It doesn't matter the circumstance I am inside, I still give thanks and I know God has grace upon me. Right. So having grace, so having been saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. We are all made alive by choosing spiritual rebirth according to God's love and mercy. Once we choose God and declare that God is our Lord, Jesus is our Lord, and we believe in our hearts, and oh my goodness, because there's many people who do not even believe in Christ and the miracles he has done from being in church for many years. Why haven't we still not believed in God? We so praise God here. We act like we're jumping, but outside of school, outside of church, we act like somebody completely different. Someone who has not been transformed. Amen. Our job as Christians is to be disciples and to show God's grace upon this whole entire earth. Because we have to show the people from outside what God has done for our lives. And declare that Jesus is Lord. And it says here in Exodus 34, 6 through 7. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate, the gracious God, slow in anger, abundant in love, and yet faithfulness. Our God is slow in anger, abundant in love, and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. God forgives wickedness. Repent and sin. Understand, God forgives that. Yet He does not leave the guilt unpunished. He punishes the children of their children for the sins of their parents to the third and fourth generation. You have to understand, young people in this place, do not fall in sin or in the weakness. Because understand this, you may not see punishment right now, but later on in life, you will start seeing the consequences of the sins that you have committed to your generations and generations. And I tell God, God, please let me not live in sin and rebellion and wickedness. Because even though you forgive me from that, I don't want to be punished from my generations and generations. I don't want to be punished more in life. Suffering is something I don't want in my life. But God being the God he is, he shows grace towards us. Moses, this Moses describes the Lord as compassionate, as gracious, like I said, a loving and faithful one, faithfulness God. Who in this verse can give you that love and faithfulness? Because our friends from our school, our friends from our work can be people who fell us. Not even the president of the United States can keep his own laws and his own sins from his mouth. 
Not even the own governor of California or the United States, every governor from each state can keep its words. Because if you start noticing there's a trend, each person who wants to be elected as a, the senator, as governor, as mayor, they start talking from their mouth. But do you ever see what they are speaking come true from their mouth? They, they say multiple things to just gain popularity in the votes. But our God, what he says in the Bible is truth. Everything that is written in the Bible is right and truth. Many people have tried to argue that the word of God is not truth. But the more you start reading, the more you start understanding God's grace. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. If you read Exodus 34, 6, I want you guys to understand the verse I was just reading right now. It says how God had mercy on the people of Israel. Disobedient to God, worshiping idols, being rebellious while Moses went out to get the Ten Commandments. Wow. God, you know what God could have done in that moment? Said, you know what, because they're disobedient to me, I'm just going to cut off the miracle, the mercy I have on him, the promise I promised to Abraham. He could have just said, I'm not taking to the promise that anymore. Because God is a God of mercy and grace, showing love towards people who are unworthy, but still punishing them. Because if we commit sin by desire, by our body knowing that it's wrong, then we will be punished. Amen. Just imagine that the people of Israel are falling, disobeying God. Who here wants to disobey God? Who here wants to obey God? I do. Who here wants to receive blessings from God? Because I do. I don't want to end up like the Israelites in the time where they were disobeying God. But I want to be full of riches and mercy. Because now you guys need to understand. God gave mercy. He gave grace to the undeserving. He died in the cross for our sins. Like I have said, oh my goodness, our God is so amazing of what he has done, Pastor. He is great, oh great, oh our God is amazing. He gives stuff to the unworthy, even though we have not done nothing for God. You know what God did for us? He died on the cross. So why then do we disobey God? Why then are we rebellious? Why then do we sin if we know that what God has done for us is great? And it says here, grace is, a, is God's gift. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for, from yourselves. It is a gift from God. It's grace that what saves us. It is grace that what leads us into victory. It does not come from ourselves, but it is a gift from God. Everything we do here, every ministry you see in the church is a gift from God. And we have to all be thankful for that. Outside of church and inside of church. There's many people who have a calling from God, but they're not showing gratitude towards that gift. They don't they don't act upon that gift. They don't show that gift enough because God has all given us a gift. But if we don't want to follow that gift, we're just saying, God, I don't want your blessing. Remove this blessing away from me. And when we have a gift from God, if God gives us the vocals to sing, and the fingers to play the piano, the hands to play the drums, the voice to preach the word of God, to evangelize, that's all a gift from God. But if we are in sin, then that gift can be taken away from us. Because everything is gifted from God. None of this comes from ourselves. None of this is not for yourself. When I'm preaching up here, it's not for myself. It's not for I to feel pride in my heart. But it's because there are people who have to be saved in the world. I'm doing this because God has called me to. God has called me to preach the word of God to those in need. Right. And if I had 
life in sin, then I know that I will pay the consequences for that. That's why I encourage everyone in this place, please do not fall into sin. Sin may seem good for our flesh like David said. David acknowledged that he was not only a sinner, but also by the nature, we're all sinners by nature, by practice too. Amen. But when we understand and acknowledge what God has gifted us, we will no longer follow sin, but follow God. Right. And in James 4, 6, it says, but he gave more grace, therefore he said, God resist the problem. But, but gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to those who are humble in the spirit. There's gonna be many people who are gonna try, who are gonna try to exalt themselves when God has given them that gift. But every person who exalts themselves will be condoned will be brought down. And that's why every time I stand up here, I fear so much with my heart. <laughs> Don't understand the amount of pressure it is on a pastor's back. The amount of temptation and sin that a pastor goes through, every preacher and evangelist, every minister, even the musicians go through that. Because the enemy knows, the enemy knows the gift that they have all been given. Don't let pride in you take control over your body. But be humble in all times. There is no cost to the person who receives a gift. A gift is free. Although it is not free for the giver. Wow. God paid the price for us. And what we do, what he gave for us is free. Wow. Remember, God had to pay the price. But we did not pray, we did not have to pay the price on the cross. The gift of salvation cost us sinners nothing. It cost us nothing, salvation. So why then do we not give thanks to God? Where is our grace towards God? Why haven't we shown Him grace? We can all be sitting down. We can all be sitting down here like a church member, clapping our hands, jumping for joy. But outside of church, where is that joy? It doesn't matter if you're at work or at school, but if there's someone in this place who can say, God, I give you thanks. I can jump for joy in the house of the Lord. Even though our family may neglect us, the church is our family. Here I can feel the presence of God. And every time I see that God blesses someone outside, that should be a leap for joy right there. A leap for victory. But the price of such an extravagant gift came at a great cost for our Lord Jesus Christ, who died in our place. For we did not deserve eternal life. Like I said, we deserve death. We deserve death. We all deserve death. But because we're in this place, I encourage each and one of you guys, young, old, stay in the house of the Lord. Remember who God is outside. When you pray, when you jump, Jump the same way you would jump outside when you have received the blessing of the Lord. And when people tell you, why are you jumping for joy? It's because I know my God is gracious and he has gifted me a job. He has gifted me something great in life because I know, oh my goodness, I can feel something in this place. The gift of God is upon all of us and we shall all jump for joy. If you're a singer, sing for joy. If you're a pianist, play the piano with joy. If you're a drummer, play the drums with joy. Amen. Because it is all from God. Hallelujah. And if you're a member of the church, show that grace to your friends. Show that grace to all the church members who feel down. Amen. Because we are all people. We are people who fulfilled God. Amen. One way or another. Nobody who's sitting on the perfect earth. 
He said, our God. It's crazy that grace is the gift that nothing is owned in return. We choose if we want God or we choose if we want the earth. We choose if we want to live. Who here wants to live in eternal life? Who here wants to live in eternity? Because I do. Why are we so... Why do we ignore sometimes what the pastor says? Why do we ignore sometimes? Because it's not the pastor sometimes telling us it's God. God guides our pastor into telling us what we are doing wrong and right. God is our counselor. And if we ignore him, we ignore his grace. Amen. And with that, I conclude with these few more verses. Amen. And it says here in Hebrews 4.16, let us, let us then, it says here in Hebrews 4.16, let us then, confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy, amen, to find grace to help in the time of need. We need help in our time of every need. And that's where God's grace comes in. Because even though the sinners sin, God's also grace salvation to them. And He shows salvation to each one of us. If we don't want to see God's grace, then we'll just leave. So that's it as that. If you don't want to be here, it's the Lord to leave. But because God shows grace, if you know God, you stay in this place. Many people will enter inside the church, but not all of them will know Christ. And we have to show to those who do not know Christ what Christ can do in the life of theirs. In the Psalms, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Hebrews 4.16. Oh, I already read that. And it says here in Psalms 44, 3 to 8, For not by their own swords did they win the land, nor did they own the arms, their own arms saved them. But your right hand and your right arm, your right hand and your arm, the light of your face, for you delight in them. You are my king, O oh God. Ordain salvation for Jacob. Through, we, through you we push down our foes. Through, you, through your name we trend down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put the shame those who hate us. Wow. It is not our swords nor our arrows that protect us, but it is our God who brings down the enemy. And that is grace shown right there. But God still cares to have mercy on you. The enemy knows, but God can say, enemy, you know who I am, and I have authority over you, enemy. Enemy knows, the Lord, that everything we do in this earth, every prayer, every fast, is guided by the Lord. That the victory is by the Lord. When we conquer, it's by the Lord. When we win is by the Lord. We don't trust in ourselves, but we trust in the Lord. And it says here, as you guys can make, you guys can take your, um, you guys may stand up in this place. God is the one who saved us. God was the one who brought down those who rise up against us. Amen. He has saved us from our sins. Has saved us from 